Blockchain has been touted as the technology that will transform many industries, starting with the financial sector, with the increase in value of cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum. As they gain huge popularity across the world, a number of Nigerians have become full-time cryptocurrency traders. Is this adequate for a country with such huge potential? Gideon Weze, founder of Kick City, joins us to share his thoughts on blockchain ecosystem and how he believes Africa and Nigeria can benefit from the technology. How does the blockchain industry work? Well, the blockchain industry is like the new internet. And uh, it's a technology, basically. And this technology is just like when the internet came out in the 90s. So it's, it's what is happening right now. And many companies are already adopting blockchain technology, just like our company. And I think that it's going to be the future of the world, the future of our future, basically. And um, what do you think about the fact that governments are trying to regulate the cryptocurrency part of blockchain? Well, the cryptocurrency part of blockchain is very, very important, and the, reg the regulation basically will make things better because you know when right now blockchain is like wide, it's like it's like wide, wide west, right? And no one knows you can do anything, and it's not very good, especially in the financial part, because in finance there must be trust, there must people must know that okay, I have this thing, I can get this with that and everything. So the regulation is a very good thing; it's welcome. So you are up for the regulation? Yes, of course, yeah. What about those who think that if you reg regulate the industry, you will centralize that aspect more? What do you have to say about that? Oh, I think it's going to be very hard to centralize blockchain. Because basically, blockchain technology is about decentralization. So you cannot centralize blockchain. Well, what people can do is to do regulation, basically. You can regulate, give some rules, how things can be done and everything. Like an agreed like terms, an agreed norms an agreed norm for people, right? But you cannot um, regulate, you cannot like centralize blockchain because it's decentralized already. There seems to be a lot of confusion about blockchain, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Just take us through some of these concepts and what do they really mean? Well, basically, um, uh, the blockchain technology is a technology that all these other things run on. So cryptos, they run on blockchain technology. When the technology, that's Bitcoin, Ethereum, Kixity, Token, different type of altcoins, they all run on um, blockchain technology. So blockchain technology itself, well, basically it's a technology that provides, it's like a ledger system, provides trust that people can know that this is recorded and you cannot change it. Okay, yeah. so give us some of the important use cases of how we can use blockchain to benefit Africa. Well, I think, well, actually, not that I think, I know, because most of people, most people have met, right, most people are developing technologies for Africa in terms of blockchain. And I think that Africa has the biggest chance to benefit from blockchain. One of the things we can do with blockchain Africa is elections, right? With blockchain technology, we're going to know that elections are free and fair. Because, you know, blockchain, it promotes transparency, promotes trust and decentralization. So no one can basically, like, rig an election. With blockchain, it's impossible to rig an election. So it's one of the biggest things that can happen in Africa. Then when we talk about finance, blockchain can actually make Africa, like, really grow in terms of um, uh, the economy. Because right now, the, the way in Africa, some currencies are dropping, right? Because of some problems or that or that. But with blockchain, if they move like the current, for example, let's say Nigeria has like a national cryptocurrency, right? Now this could be good for us because we'll not be having our currency dropping down and everything. Like yeah, Venezuela, yeah? You think that's the right move? Well, I think it's the move for the future. Many countries are considering doing that, like Estonia, like Bulgar, like Estonia, and uh, I think um, uh, some Venezuela. Venezuela. There are other ones in East Europe that want to do, do national currency. Yeah, but at, at the end of the day, doesn't it uh, create some sort of chaos? Because there, there are thousands of old coins now, right. and more are coming on. I mean, how, how would the world cope with it? Right now, there is chaos. But I will tell you something, right? Basically, blockchain is bringing about value. That simply means that you have value and I have value. So anything I do, I'm pro providing value to people. And that is also one of the things which we focus on Kick City to do, to bring in value to people, right? Because with the, if different people have their own coins, basically you can change those coins. You know, that's why we have an exchange. <laughs> Interesting. Well, okay, tell us a bit, a bit about your innovations. Because we're thinking, how can we, you know, influence the lives of many people, right? How can we bring blockchain technology to lots of people, like people who don't know anything about tech? And we thought that we could do it with Kick City. 
So Kick City basically is an event platform, it's an event solution. So it's very close to any ticketing service that you know, but we're doing something different because one, we focus on the social aspect. So it's like a social platform, social media like Facebook only for events. But we use cryptocurrency to create value. That means you have value. If you're going to an event, you can like share some links to your friends and help promote an event. And for that, you earn cryptocurrencies. And this cryptocurrency, you can spend it or you can use to buy tickets later. Does it not make you a bank? Does it make Kick City a bank? Yeah. It doesn't make Kick City a bank. Yeah, but I mean, if you have a currency that if I, if I promote you and I get paid a currency that I can spend, automatically makes you some sort no, of authority. It, it, it doesn't really make you a bank. Okay. What it does is this, because, you know, we will re release some coins, right? Now, these coins are being sold out to anybody. So right now you can go and get Kick City coins. So in the token generation event, which will start in February, you will give out the coins to people. And now these coins can be traded, right? So it will not belong to us, but it will belong to everybody. And that is what blockchain is about. Hmm. So the thing does not belong to anybody, but it belongs to everybody. And you can see it and you can track it, and that's what makes it decentralized. Hmm. Interesting. But but you know, but I'm wondering how would government or I mean for example tax collecting authorities they certainly will not be happy with this because honestly, it's like taking power off them. Which is a very good thing. <laughs> but I will tell you, right, okay, let's look at Africa, right? Lots of corruption. You people pay tax and they don't even see the result. Well, although there is a way where, you know, things can be, uh, cryptos can be taxed. Right now in the U.S., they're trying to find a way to tax cryptocurrencies and uh, in Coinbase. If you have like more than $20,000, you have to pay taxes, right? You have to declare and pay taxes. But again, it's very important for the decentralization because with that comes trust. With that, you know that the government cannot do anything, just you know, go ahead and do whatever they like, or you know, corrupt individuals cannot do anything. Although there are two types of blockchain, right? We have the open blockchain, and the, the public blockchain, and the, the private blockchain. So for example, the banks in Nigeria can run a private blockchain. That means that the government, no one can defraud the bank, or the government cannot like, take money or spend it unnecessarily. But it's private, it's a blockchain, but it's private. It's been controlled by certain servers, which without consensus, things will not work. And that should be the future. Like, in terms of technology, right, I'm more of a, te a tech person than a crypto trader or something, right? In terms of technology, a private blockchain would be a very, very big solution, you know, that can help move things in Africa and all over the world, too. Mm -hmm. A lot of just are becoming cryptocurrency traders. Um, do yeah. you think that's the route to go? Why? Because they want to make money. Yeah, but is that the route to go? Well, it depends on you. I'm, uh, I am not a trader. So what would you advise? I know trading. I have friends who do trading. Sometimes, you know, you might just go into it, but I think that it's very risky. If you want to trade, just make sure you, like, I always advise people to spend, like, 20% of whatever you have in trading, right? Don't put all your eggs in one basket. Because right now, the market is unregulated, although the profits are, like, huge, massive. <laughs> yeah, well, like, don't put everything you have in one basket. Basket, Like, spend, like, 20% of whatever you have. Go into trading. Try it out if you want to try it out. You can, learn, you can make a lot of money. There, you can lose a lot, too. But you have to be sure that whatever you're putting in there is not something you, if you lose, you'll commit suicide, right? And also, you can, you know, when you're trying to, you know, go into that, try to get coins that have real use cases. So that's basically why, you know, in Kick City, we'll build, in a, we'll build a platform where we're going to, we'll plan to have the biggest real cases, use cases of, of like, cryptos. Because, you know, events, many people go to events, you know, you have many people going, event owners want to sell more tickets. So by bringing event owners to sell more tickets and helping the masses, that means anybody can earn crypto, right? I invite you to an event which I, I want to go or which I'm not going into, but if you buy a ticket, I earn. It's like a cashback, like a reward system, basically. But we use this money, we share the money among the masses. And that, that means we can actually provide employment, and that means we're also helping people, like, you know, grow financially by empowering them. So tell us, how did you double into the whole blockchain industry? Well, basically, I've been an entrepreneur in my company, Kick City, and uh, since I live in Russia, and Russia is like the leading company, leading country in crypto, in blockchain technology, and we have very good developers too. So that's how I got in contact with blockchain in Russia through the contacts I had there, the conferences, you know, because our company right now is functioning in Russia and in the US, and we're looking at launching in Africa because Africa has a very huge potential. And we plan to be the com company with the highest, like, huge amount of transactions in Africa in Ethereum mainnet. Mm. So, yeah, purchase our tokens.
crypto is here to stay too. Thank crypto you, is here to stay too. Yeah, you're All welcome. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Gideon has shared his thoughts on the blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies. But let me ask you, do you still find it somewhat mysterious? Well, I did until a few days ago after reading Mark Zuckerberg's post that he was going to dig deeper into the technology. Hmm. The world should expect more innovations being built on blockchain going forward. That's it for our show today. Please follow us on social media. And don't forget, you can watch these and previous editions of the show on the channel's TV YouTube account or via my blog, cfatech.ng. For Tech Trends, I'm Chukameka Agbata. Ow.